Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 9th, 2019. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Get your free trial copy of the new currency exchange planner, the number one must-have tool for Denarians for pre and post RV planning. Link is in the description below. Fill out the registration and an email will be sent with the special access link. Mention the Denarian and get 20% off the full Unleash Planner. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert, and know we all cross the finish line together. We have a lot of great articles lined up for today. Grab a drink and relax. This is going to be a long one. First article of interest. Urgent Saleh receives a phone call from Pence. And this is his details. President of the Republic Baran Saleh received, on Monday evening, a phone call from Vice President of the United States of America Michael Pence. A presidential statement, received by the agency, Alfred News, said that, during the phone call, the current situation in Iraq and the region in general was discussed as well as a discussion of ways to develop bilateral relations in a manner that enhances joint cooperation between the two countries. Vice President Pence affirmed his support for the stability of Iraq, the aspirations of the Iraqis for reform and peace, and the renunciation of violence, noting the importance of respecting and protecting the will of the Iraqis and their choices away from external interference. President Saleh affirmed, ensuring that solutions to the current conditions are in response to the Iraqi national decision away from external interference, by peaceful means, in a manner that preserves security and injects blood and helps in upholding the rule of law and the state, preserves the right to expression and peaceful protest, and promotes addressing all attempts to interfere in the country's internal affairs, and tampering with his security. The President of the Republic stressed the need to renounce violence, maintain the peace of the popular movement, and preserve the right of the people of the country to express their aspirations and demands in a manner befitting a democratic state, while emphasizing the support of the security and military establishment to carry out its national duty to preserve the lives of citizens and property and prevent violations and transgression of citizens and security year. The President and the American Vice President also recalled the memory of liberating the city of Mosul, the sacrifices of Iraqis in the face of terrorism, the role of the United States and the international coalition and its support for Iraq in the war on terrorism, and stressed the importance of reconstructing destroyed cities, the return of the displaced and ensuring the coexistence of religious and national components and their unity to confront extremism. Is over. Next article of interest. Parliamentary finance. The government is obligated to send the budget to Parliament despite its conversion to conduct business. The Parliamentary Finance Committee confirmed, on Monday, that the Council of Ministers is obligated to send a draft federal budget law for 2020 to the House of Representatives according to the Federal Financial Administration law despite its transformation into a caretaker government. Committee member Sam Shannon said in a press statement, the government's shift to conducting business does not hinder it from sending the federal budget bill for 2020 to the House of Representatives. The Federal Financial Administration Act allowed the government to send the budget even if it was a business only. She added that the Council of Ministers will abide by the Federal Financial Administration law to send the budget to Parliament during the coming period noting that the Kurdish delegation who arrived in the capital, Baghdad, at the beginning of this week, agreed to commit to delivering the oil share on a daily basis beginning of next year, and indicated that the agreement with the Kurdistan regional government may facilitate the process of sending the budget to parliament as it exceeded an important contentious point. The MP revealed the Kurdish Islamic group, Salim Hamza, the day before yesterday, Saturday, the details of the final agreement between Baghdad and Erbil on the 2020 budget, indicating that Erbil is committed to handing Baghdad 250 barrels. Next article of interest. Political blocs reach a final decision to choose a candidate to head the Iraqi government. Iraqi MPs revealed, on Monday, that the political blocs reached the final decision to choose a candidate to head the government and put forward his name during the next few days 
and at a time when the candidates for the bloc set six basic conditions that are required to take office, deputies confirmed that the candidate should have the blessing of the reference. Parliament member Mohammed al Dawi told al Sabah that the political blocks have mobility and convictions to reach commonalities between them. He added that the blocks are currently trading for names after the dozens of names submitted to the Prime Minister were excluded, noting that what remains is only the choice of one of the names proposed to be a new Prime Minister to succeed the outgoing Adel Abdul Mahdi. Al Dawi added that the candidate must win acceptance from the authority and the masses in Iraq, preferring the final announcement of the name at the end of the current week after the agreement between the political blocs on the most appropriate personality according to the established specifications. Al Dawi clarified that the reference clearly and explicitly pointed to an important topic which is, the parliament must reconsider its options as these options are supposed to be more focused, studied and deeper than previous experiences in order to avoid errors that have occurred. For his part, the member of the Iraqi parliament, Nafal al-Nashik, told al Sabah that discussions are still going on between the blocs to choose an independent figure to receive the next prime minister. He added, so far, no candidate has been nominated to publicly because the political blocs decided to pass this issue in complete secrecy, away from the media. Moreover, a member of the House of Representatives, Yana Damkana, said in a statement to the Iraqi news agency that there are 20 people from inside parliament and from various political blocs. They met the President of the Republic, Baram Sali, and they presented him with a list containing the conditions of selection of the President. 120. He continued. One of the most important conditions for choosing a prime minister is that he does not belong to a party and is not dual national, explaining that these conditions are consistent with the conditions of the demonstrators. Next article of interest. The laws guarantee the government's reform package. The Iraqi Chronicle of the Ministry of Justice announced the issuance of a new issue of the official Gazette of the Republic of Iraq in the number. 4,561, as it included a number of laws of the reform package launched by the government. The Director General of the Department, Kamal Amin Hashem, said that the number included law number 26 for the year 2019, the First Amendment to the Unified Retirement Law number 9 for the year 2014, and law number 27 for the year 2019 the Second Amendment to the Provincial and District Council Elections Law No. 12, for the year 2018. The Director General added that the number also included Law No. 28, of 2019, cancelling financial concessions for officials in the country, in addition to Law No. 29, of 2019 Law, the Iraqi National Olympic Committee, and Statement No. 101 for the year 2019 issued by the Supreme Judicial Council. Next article of interest. Iraq is seeking to collect nearly $90 billion, owed by 55 countries. The Integrity Commission disclosed that Iraq seeks to obtain amounts in excess of $87 billion as an initial estimate, due from 55 countries that had contracted with it before Iraq's occupation of Kuwait while stressing Spain's readiness to pay the value of a signed contract with the country during that same period in the form of goods. The semi-official newspaper, Al Sabah, was quoted in its issue issued today, Monday, by the head of the Recovery Department and the Integrity Commission as saying that Iraqi laws authorize to official bodies to retrieve Iraqi money abroad, which is the money back fund that was then formed under the chairmanship of the Deputy Minister of Finance and the membership of a number of bodies such as the Central Bank and the two foreign ministries justice was his specific mission to recover the money that was used during the period of economic sanctions on Iraq after the occupation of Kuwait and specialized in the topic of oil for food. He added. The other official authority is the Recovery Department that was formed according to Decree No. 30 of 2011 and is concerned with the recovery of funds and those accused after 2003 due to corruption crimes, as the Integrity Commission is concerned with the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, 
and therefore it has become the official body to implement the obligations of Iraq under the United Nations Agreement. It did not allow it to communicate with external parties and their counterparts. And he added, it is part of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption in the fourth chapter of the fifth chapter on asset recovery and international cooperation as a recovery department. Since most of the laws in force are not regulated and do not take into account the issue of recovery of money, given that the recovery of accused and convicted persons is regulated by bilateral agreements. He indicated that the issue of the recovery of funds, which is the focus of the conversation, appeared on the surface after the Arab Spring, as there were no laws in this regard such as the recovery of funds, and accordingly the Commission found the legal basis for one of the chapters to recover the assets and obligated the countries included in the United Nations Convention Against Corruption to show possible assistance in recovering the assets obtained from corruption crimes and the Commission started working in this field, as it is Iraqi money that must be worked on. The head of the recovery department promised that the recovery fund was born dead since its establishment in the Ministry of Finance, and after that the urgent need to activate it appeared, which was done in 2015 and after confirming that there are funds for Iraq and a number of countries, noting that, with a proposal from the recovery department, a technical team has been formed to recover the money and it was formed in January 2017, within the Prime Minister's office, as it includes all the concerned authorities, and that also gives him a kind of strength, and already began work on creating a database that includes all Iraqi money abroad, and a form was prepared and sent to all ministries, institutions and governorates about what is exists of money from Sheikh the country. Before the occupation of Kuwait, he pointed out that everyone knows that Iraq and after the occupation of Kuwait, all its money abroad was frozen in Security Council Resolutions 660 and 661. Whether they are official or people related to the former regime. For example, Iraq had a contract with Italy concluded in the end of the 80s to establish a naval war fleet of 11 ships worth $1 billion and $350 million were delivered to the Italian side in the form of oil and other cash. He continued. The contract was lagged due to the issue of Kuwait and was postponed and not implemented and the money received from the Italian side and the ships were not delivered to Iraq and after that they were sold by Italian specialized companies to another party and despite that the Italian side filed a lawsuit against Iraq for the damage after 2003 and then Iraq delegated lawyers to restore his right. And he added. There is another contract with Spain worth $11 million in agreement with the Ministry of Industry to provide Iraq with various industrial materials, which was not implemented also due to the Kuwait War and was recently discussed with the Spanish side, who confirmed his willingness to pay the money but in the form of goods, noting that contact was made with the Ministry Industry and now we are in the process of importing goods to the Ministry of the Amount disclosing that his department has a database and statistics for 55 city-states in Iraq. He emphasized that the work team that was formed in the year 2017 worked to amend the law of the money back fund and the orientation had to be in the integrity authority and transferred the priorities of the recovery team to the fund, including statistics in the amounts that belong to Iraq in the hands of 55 countries as a result of contracts concluded before Iraq's occupation of Kuwait and the establishment of a base data includes all Iraqi money abroad. He added, that a form has been prepared and sent to all ministries, institutions and governorates about what is available from money outside Iraq, especially since the money claimed by Iraq is not documented and is not corporate money and it is concluded contracts that were not implemented and tired because of the Kuwait issue, stressing that the estimated number of these amounts is estimated at $84,1 billion and $291 million in addition to 2 billion and 337 million euros and approximately 1 trillion and 326 billion dinars indicating that the fund is currently working to ensure that information in these debts does not intersect between ministries governmental institutions and governorates next article of interest the american embassy warns its citizens of the demonstrations tomorrow the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad today warned its citizens of the demonstrations tomorrow, 
which are to be launched in Baghdad and the central and southern governorates. The embassy said in a statement, a warning to American citizens regarding the demonstrations from the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, Iraq, on December 9, 2019. She added, location, Baghdad and other major cities, with the exception of the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Reason, according to reports, the number of demonstrations is expected to increase from Tuesday, December 10, 2019. American citizens may notice an intense security presence. The Prime Minister has announced that it will be a day Tuesday, December 10 as a holiday to celebrate the anniversary of the ISIS defeat, as checkpoints are expected to be closed in the international zone and traffic disturbances. Actions to be taken According to the travel warnings issued in May 2019, it is advised not to travel to Iraq. Avoid the zone's demonstrations. Comply with the directions of the authorities. Monitor local media for the latest news. End. Next article of interest, Iraqi Ambassador Receives European Investment Bank. The Ambassador of the Republic of Iraq to Brussels Mr. Sadiq al-Rakhabi received a delegation from the European Investment Bank. They discussed ways of resuming negotiations between the two sides on the framework agreement to be signed between Iraq and the European Investment Bank. The bank's funding and support for private sector projects will contribute to stimulating intertrade between Iraq and ITU member states, and provide many vacancies for Iraqi university graduates. On his part, the head of the delegation of the European Investment Bank stressed the importance of Iraq its position to the European Union, and their appreciation for the difficult circumstances and challenges, indicating their readiness to start negotiations again and provide assistance to Iraq in the common interests. The two sides agreed to hold a second expanded meeting to discuss the draft framework agreement. Next article of interest. Saleh affirms commitment to the timing of choosing a satisfactory interim government from the people. President of the Republic Baram Saleh, on Monday, December 9, 2019, stressed the commitment to constitutional timing to select a prime minister for a temporary government that is acceptable to him from the people. The presidency said in a statement that, President of the Republic Baram Saleh received, at the Peace Palace in Baghdad, a number of heads of parliamentary blocs in the House of Representatives, and examines the political and security conditions in the country. Saleh stressed, according to the statement, the importance of adhering to the constitutional timing to resolve the Prime Minister's nomination for an interim government and the need to choose a national, competent and satisfactory person from him from the Iraqi people and capable of achieving the required reform benefits, and he is charged with preparing to conduct fair elections in accordance with an electoral law that guarantees a fair representation of the people in their free will. He stressed, rejecting violence and confronting outlaws who target peaceful protests and public security, stressing, securing constitutional rights to peaceful demonstrations, expressing opinion and protecting peaceful protesters and public security. The President of the Republic emphasized, the follow-up to the security services to protect activists from kidnappings and intimidation by criminal gangs, and to work to support the state and its institutions to enforce the rule of law. Next article of interest. Spectrum Bank decides to increase its capital to 150 billion dinars. The General Authority of the Islamic Spectrum Bank for Investment and Finance decided to increase the bank's capital to 150 billion dinars, an increase of 50 billion dinars. A source in the bank told al Sad News that the General Assembly held a general meeting and voted to distribute the profits and increase the bank's capital to 150 billion dinars. He added that the bank's capital is currently 100 billion dinars. It is noteworthy that the Islamic Spectrum Bank was a money transfer company and it was transformed into an Islamic bank early this year. And the bank achieved profits during the past year 222.1 million dinars. Next article of interest. Deutsche Bank strategist predicts crypto could replace fiat money. Deutsche Bank analysts have made some predictions regarding the future of cryptocurrency. 
strategist Jim Reed explained why cryptocurrencies are inevitable and how the existing fiat money system could crumble over the next decade, leading to soaring demand for cryptocurrencies. The End of Fiat Money Cryptocurrencies are inevitable. Deutsche Bank Research released a special edition of Concept entitled Imagine 2030 on Thursday. Concept is a regularly published research report that addresses the fundamental issues driving the world of economics and finance. In the 84 page special edition, Deutsche Bank analysts discuss contrarian ideas of how the 2020s may evolve. Jim Reed, global head of fundamental credit, Strategy and thematic research at Deutsche Bank wrote in the report While critics bemoan cryptocurrencies as constrained by regulatory hurdles, we believe the incentives of governments and card providers are such that digital currencies are inevitable. He authored the section of the report entitled The End of Fiat Money. Read detailed The forces that have held the current fiat system together now look fragile and they could unravel in the 2020s. If so, that will start to lead to a backlash against fiat money and demand for alternative currencies, such as gold or crypto could soar. Cryptocurrencies could replace cash. One of the sections of the report discusses cryptocurrencies as the 21st century cash. Marion Liber authored this section, with contribution from Anthony Chamowitz, market research lead for the EMEA and APAC regions at the bank. Until now, Cryptocurrencies have been additions, rather than substitutes, to the global inventory of money, Liber explained, asserting that, over the next decade, this may change. She elaborated, overcoming regulatory hurdles will broaden their appeal and raise the potential to eventually replace cash. Liber provided a comparison between the adoption rates of cryptocurrencies and the Internet by examining the number of blockchain wallet users and the number of Internet users over multiple years. It is early days but the curves are similar after adjusting for scale, she claims. Indeed, if current trends continue, there could be 200 in blockchain wallet users in 2030. To achieve widespread adoption, Liber believes that cryptocurrencies must become legitimate in the eyes of governments and regulators. They must also allow for global reach in the payment market. Furthermore, to do this, alliances must be forged with key stakeholders. Mobile apps such as Apple Pay, Google Pay, card providers such as Visa and MasterCard, and retailers, such as Amazon and Walmart, she opined. If these challenges can be overcome, the eventual future of cash is at risk. Liber continued, As we look to the decade ahead, it would not be surprising if a new and mainstream cryptocurrency were to unexpectedly emerge. Cryptocurrencies may constitute the best tool for a digital war, she added, pointing out that some countries with historically strong banking industries are already trialing them. The question is which country will take advantage of being the first to obtain licenses and build alliances. As that occurs, the line between cryptocurrencies, financial institutions, and public and private sectors may become blurred, she concluded. Like subscribe to be alerted as breaking news unfolds from Iraq. Your free trial copy of the new currency exchange planner is waiting for you in the description box below. Register to get the special access email with the download link. Enter the discount code, the denarian and get 20% off the full unleashed version. Stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Over and out for now, the denarian.